Alright, welcome back to the channel. I am Demarius Jackson with Jazz Improv Basics. I want to thank you for joining me, all these wonderful musicians out there in the world. Today we are going to be going over the Altered Dominant Scale. I should have wrote scale up there, but Altered Dominant Scale and how we can use it in improvisation. So this basically, uh, without further ado, goes into the premise of any dominant scale. So I'll write it over here, or kind of underneath it. Any dominant scale, well, we'll just say a five dominant, right? Going to its one, this scale, or the notes that you could use over that can be altered. It doesn't have to be a strict uh, mixolydian, and hopefully you know what I'm talking about, mixolydian scale. So let's start from the beginning. So we'll just say in the key of C. If you see C7 and play the scale that corresponds with that, most people would say that it's the C mixolydian scale, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and then C. All right, so we have it right here. All right, so very simply, if I were to see a C7, I'll write it underneath it. C7, that is going to go to an F, we'll just say major. Basically, I can alter any note in this dominant scale, and the alterations would be the altered dominant. So when I say altered dominant, basically an altered dominant, all it does is give you the flat nine, the sharp nine, the, what else does it give you? Sharp 11, the flat 13, and of course it gives you the seventh, which is written in the scale. So the question is, how do we figure out, how do we get from playing a normal C mixolydian scale to playing all these alterations, the easiest way to figure it out? For me, the easiest way to figure it out is knowing what an ascending melodic minor scale is. All right, so let's start from the beginning. I'm just gonna write up here right now, as I did up here, a major scale, but I'm not gonna label it or anything. We'll just write a major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. So an ascending melodic minor scale, basically on the way up, that's the only part of the melodic minor scale that we're gonna think of. All it is is you're gonna lower the third scale degree. So essentially, we have lowered the third, one, two, three, E flat, and it gives me this. Right? Ascending. Now, how do I transform that into a melodic minor scale? This is the part where it gets a little tricky, and hopefully I won't confuse you. I'll thoroughly explain everything, I hope. All right. So I figure it out by simply taking this, right? We're in the key of C, and I drop down a half step to the B. And then I play from B to B, and that gives me B altered dominant. So basically, anytime that you would see B, I've usually seen it written like this, B7 alt, or you might see B7 flat 9, B7 sharp 9, etc. Those are just simply alterations. So all I did was basically go from B go up a half step to whatever note that is and play that ascending melodic minor scale. And it sounds like this, in the key of B at least, uh, for me on saxophone. And B wants to resolve to E. Right? So in this case, we're going to switch it back to up here. So you say, how do I figure out what a C7 altered dominant scale well, very simple. Well, we'll do the process in reverse. We're going to go C, all right? We're going to go up a half step. So up a half step from C is C sharp or D flat. And we're going to think D flat ascending melodic minor scale. So uh, me personally, I remember when I was learning theory in, in uh, school and everything, I related everything to saxophone. So I'll be in class so they are finger through saxophone or clarinet or whatever it was that was on my mind at the time, figuring these things out. So let's go ahead and do it. I have no shame in my game. So we want to figure out a C altered dominant scale. We go from C, we go up a half step to the D flat or C sharp, and then we think, all right, 
ascending melodic minor scale starting from D, which is just a C sharp major scale with a flat third. So I would simply go, all right, we have the D flat. What's next? Then we have an E flat, all right? And then we have bop, bop, bop. And then my, my next note would be an E natural, or we could think F flat, which is a horrible thing to fit, say, but we'll just write it anyway, geez. So F flat, and I'll write E natural. Oh, that's a five, geez. E natural underneath it, all right? And then we have F sharp or G flat. And then we have the A flat. Then we have B flat and C. So another name for the altered dominant scale, you might have heard it as the uh, seventh mode of ascending melodic minor. Uh, some people, I believe, call it super locrian. There's all kinds of names for it. Uh, but uh, names aside, I like to think of the easiest ways to think of things. All right. And then so if we relate this to a, a C. So now we have written down a C altered dominant scale. Sounds like this. <laughs> C wants to resolve up to its F. So, like I said before, it gives you all the alterations, the flat nine. So, if we look at C and think of what is a flat nine in the key of C, if it's a C7, it's going to be D flat. If we think of a sharp nine, right, it's going to be D sharp or E flat and harmonically. The same thing with the sharp 11. The sharp 11 in C is F sharp. You see, we have it right here in the G flat, once again, harmonically. And then the flat 13. Right there, and then there's seven. So without me thinking of a lot, a lot of numbers, it's important to know, you know, the theory behind it. But once again, for me, I try to figure out the easiest ways of figuring things out. So if we backtrack a little bit to the B, once again, we have the B, we go up a half step, and then we just have that C ascending melodic minor scale. Now, I practice this in a myriad of ways, uh, but one of the ways that I like to try to practice is with enclosures. So uh, it sounds a little bit more complicated than what it is. I'll do this one in the key of C so you can hear it. So essentially I'll play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and then descend eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, seven, underneath my tonic, and then one. Sounds like this. <laughs> And then I like to resolve it to its tonic just for my ear purposes so I can hear where it goes. So all together, once again, it sounds like this. And we can do the same thing just so you can hear the B as well. And then once again, I'll just take that through the paces and make sure that I know it on my horn. Uh, another one, just practice it the same way that you would practice all of your major scales. And this kind of gets you uh, comfortable with the scale under your fingers. You can do it in thirds. Uh, let's see. So we got, I'll play it normal first. <laughs> I skipped the note in there. <laughs> Maybe I need to go practice after this. But you kind of get the point. Now, let's talk about a little bit, uh, really, really quickly, of implementing this over improvisation. So hopefully you can see it. I, I have my camera rear facing. Hopefully I'm not getting everything in here. I have my kids' blocks down here. Hopefully you don't see that. But let's look at a blues, right? So we'll just do a, a blues uh, for you to see it in the key of C, I'm going to play it in a different key. Sorry if you have perfect pitch out there and it messes you up. But we're just going to look at the first five bars of a blues, right? So we have F7, C, and this is really, really basic. Once again, I'm not doing anything fancy. And then we go back to the F7 right here. So if we look at this, uh, these are the first five measures or the first five bars of a blues. Very, very simply, if I look from here, C to F. We have that five to one relationship. So that fourth bar of the blues is kind of the perfect spot uh, for you to go ahead and kind of insert the ultra dominant just to get your fingers around it and kind of get the sound of it in your ear and kind of uh, trying to learn kind of where it resolves. So I'll go ahead and I'll play this. Hopefully my computer 
uh, boots up here. I'm going to play a B flat blues and just listen really, really closely to uh, the the fourth bar. One, two. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> a little bit out of time but I really want you to concentrate on hearing that altered dominant and that's probably a sound that you've honestly heard before in a lot of players if you don't already play it for yourself or if you play it all the time this is just hopefully an explanation of what's been happening I'm gonna go ahead and play the entire blues and I'm gonna try to implement and insert uh, the altered dominant scale as many places as I can and to be honest with you a lot of times you can play around with it it doesn't necessarily have to you know, you see this, insert this here. Uh, just get familiar with the sound, get comfortable and love what that sound is and figure it out and kind of make it your own. So I'll go through this maybe a couple of times and then you can kind of pinpoint exactly where uh, you hear the altered dominant and kind of hear what's going on. So here we go, let's start again. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> times once again you can get really really kind of fancy with it play it slow uh, double time play it fast but that's essentially what it is and so there you have it on the board hopefully once again you see everything uh, I'll scroll down if not I would really like to not record this whole video over again but I will if I have to uh, hopefully you got something from it enjoyed it like it smash the subscribe all that good stuff and uh, until next time, happy practicing, and I'll talk to you later.